job. Hi, I'm Robert Osborne. Welcome to more in our 24-hour salute to Maureen O'Hara, who died in Boise, Idaho in October at the age of 95. Maureen was always the personification of the red-headed Irish lass, strong and sassy and spirited and breathtakingly beautiful, especially in Technicolor. We're going to bring you another sample of that Maureen O'Hara right now. Our next film is The Quiet Man, released by Republic Pictures in 1952 and teaming Marine with two men she worked with quite often and always with great results. Those two guys being John Wayne and director John Ford. Now it's a story that all three of them loved and were anxious to put on film about a retired American boxer who after his fighting days are over, returns to Ireland to live what he hopes is gonna be a quiet life. Although things don't go as planned due to the fact he falls for a very spunky, redheaded Irish lass. Now, John Ford was especially keen about making this movie, but amazingly, even with his record and the Academy Awards lined up on his mantle at home, he couldn't get anybody in Hollywood interested in financing it, not even with John Wayne and Maureen O'Hara committed to star in it. All the major studios turned down the package. But finally, John Wayne's old boss at the Lower Rung Republic Studios, Herbert Yates, eventually agreed to finance it. But even Yates thought it was such a risky venture. He only agreed to make it if first Ford, Wayne, and O'Hara would do a less expensive black and white western for his company. Gates figured that a western made by that trio would at least make enough money to cover the losses on The Quiet Man. Well, everybody agreed to that plan, although Ford wasn't all that keen about ever making a film at Yates' studio. That's how low it ranked on the Hollywood charts. But the western was made real grand and it was a big hit. But as it turned out, so was The Quiet Man. Not only was it a huge moneymaker, but it went on to earn an Academy Award nomination for Best Picture of the Year, the only Republic picture to ever achieve that distinction. And on top of that, it also won the Oscar for John Ford as the year's best director. I mean, talk about your Hollywood endings. So here's a movie that few people had any faith in, but almost everybody in the world loved when they saw it. From 1952, The Quiet Man. Mm -hmm. 